Um, how's everyone doing? Awesome, awesome. So I think that we can all rally around this together as a community. I believe the children are future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. I do believe that the children are our future, and I think we can get around that. But we are freaking them out. <laughs> When we're talking about going to college, it has gotten so chaotic. They're inundated with messages all the time. It's, it's gone crazy. And this is what parents and students experience. So when you look at all this stuff up here, so go anywhere. And when I talk about going to college anywhere, we need to continue to have folks choose higher education. We've got about 32% of the US that has bachelor's degrees right now. Um, but of those that start, close to 40% don't finish their bachelor's degrees. And as this cuckoo crazy world is ever changing um, with technology and a variety of things, we need to be able to encourage more folks to go to college and to stay to college. So I'm gonna talk about go anywhere, and you know what? It doesn't really matter that much where you do your undergrad, but I'll talk about that in a, in a little bit. I'm also gonna talk about some in, more information isn't always better as far as making your college choice. And last, I'm gonna talk about you, the students, regardless of their high school background or GED, there is some place for them. They can be successful, they can do it. Now I'm not one of those that is gonna say, every single one of you can get into an Ivy League school, okay? Never gonna get it, never gonna get it, never. That's probably not gonna happen. <laughs> but what I can tell you is that you're gonna be able to find some place where you can take advantage of the resources and be successful. So let me tell you a little bit about my college exploration experience. And now I'm all alone again, nowhere to turn, no one to go to. Now, I'm being a little dramatic, and I see my mother, and she's probably going, dude, I helped you, right? <laughs> so I may be a little dramatic, but I didn't help myself much, okay? I wasn't known for my academic forte growing up. And actually, um, I have a learning di disability, which is crazy that I'm doing this because it's fine motor, and I'm just happy that my shoes are tied. And so that that's on video. So if you could see me, if you could see me walking down Glen Acres Elementary School in all powder blue, because my sisters didn't tell me that matching, I thought matching meant the top and the bottom, everything. And so I'd be in velour. And dude, I was just trying to do this. Out to the special trailer, that's how I went. I was not the most popular student, as you can probably imagine. So I decided academics aren't meant for me. So I focused on other things. I focused on wrestling. That probably wasn't gonna work out professionally. This is as big as I've gotten. Um, and then I also love music. Don't tell me not to live, just sit and putter. Life's candy and the sun's a ball of butter. Don't bring around a clip. But boy, do they rain on my parade, man. Um, I'm an okay singer, and I don't read music, and I can't play anything because of these things. So I'm like, dude, what do I do? Mom's like, you go to college. My, gr <laughs> my grades were crappy. Um, I applied to one place. I can't even remember if we visited or not. We knew because my sisters, no, we didn't. Because my sisters had gone there. I took the SAT once. That was it. I was out the night before. Um, I did all those things that you're not supposed to do in order to prep for college. And, you know, there, no one tweeted at me. There was no internet. There was no website. I, you know, there were these big books that you tried to get down at your counselor's office, right? And that's what you would read through all the time. And, you know, I, I wasn't inundated with all of these, all this information from all these different places, thousands of emails and all that sort of thing. And you know what? It's kind of nice. It 
I'm trying to spread the love here with my mix. So, um, and here's the amazing thing. So I went, I went to school. It was good. And guess what? I was happy because I sort of figured out that, oh, you study when you go to college. That's what my friends were doing. And so I jumped in and I took advantage of all the resources that are out there. And um, I would never change a thing. I would, you know, I didn't have 10 different choices, but I made the most of what they were. And I would never change it. And I bet there's a lot of you out there that had to go where you had to go, but you wouldn't change your alma mater based on taking advantage of the experiences that you had. So, you know, today we've got kids that are just so inundated and they're walking with these things and they're on campus tours and they're madness. And they're like, what school am I at? What are my priorities? But, you know, can I, can I, someone's texting me, I gotta go. You know, so that's what, you know, kind of how it rolls. So here's the good news. There's no perfect school out there, and there's no perfect school for any particular person. Now they're all gonna say, Elizabeth Shue, my first film crush, but anyway, I digress. <laughs> so there is no perfect school out there. I don't want 730 classes. I want to park somewhere. <laughs> I don't want exams after the holiday. I have to study on Thanksgiving. I don't want bureaucracy. But guess what? Universities aren't made just for one person. That's like a date, right? Or a counseling session or something. Universities are made for multiple students. And so you have to know going in that it's not everything is going to be perfect. And if you know that, then the good news is, is that that's okay. Then there is no perfect place. So there's probably a bunch of places you could go and be successful. So you're not always going to get. My thumbs get sticky. So you can't always get what you want. Now, for 44000 a year or $10,000 a year, you should get some of the things you want, right? I mean, I think that's only fair. But the other thing is I truly believe it's, it's not a, you know, higher ed institutions um, are serving students purely as customers. It's an educational experience. It's a collaborative experience. As a university, we know better. We know better what you need. And a little failure can go a long way. Doesn't kill you, makes you stronger. Stand a Have you guys seen that video? I'm actually... Anyway. <laughs> so, recently, Purdue and uh, Purdue and Gallup poll um, sent out, talked to like 30, survey out to 30,000 alums from all over the country, different universities. Um, and they were looking at two things. They were looking at engagement at work, Okay, so how engaged people are at work and sort of how happy they are, um, but really kind of looking at overall well-being and striving for that. And so here's two things they found. Here's the first one. I get by with a little help from my friends. Now, the original words from that, John and Paul, I heard, where I get by with a little help from my faculty. <laughs> so that's what they meant by that, okay? And what I mean by that is what they found is students who had a passionate teacher as a faculty member, someone who mentored them um, and was a mentor along the way, and a couple of other things, were two times more likely to be engaged at work. So we're excited about work, we're doing well, um, we're productive, and their overall well-being was also um, two times likely to happen, which is pretty cool. So what was another found? Finding. Work hard, play hard. Work, 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 work. Diamonds all in my ring, player, go watch. Ooh, I gotta stop it before the bad word comes. Okay. <laughs> I tried to download the other one, but I wasn't able to. So, work. So what they found is students that did internships, were involved in student organizations, 
um, as well as had longer projects over the semester, were more engaged at work. They were more enthusiastic about being at work and all that sort of thing. Here is the great news, okay? It didn't matter where they went to school. It was, there were small private schools, there were large public schools, there were um, the 100 top US News and World Report schools, and it didn't matter. It mattered what were their experiences when they were at that college, right? So that means there's lots of places that you can be successful. Now, how many universities, and there's over 2,870 something out there, depending on what's going on today. Um, how many have professors? Oh. Yeah. And how many do things like internships and uh, have a stu one student organization? Now, the quality may be different, and you've got to look at those things for sure, but there are lots of different places that you are able um, to do that. So, a little tough love. I wish I was special. You're so very special. All right, so for the students coming up, you're special, but you're not. Okay? <laughs> so... What I mean by that is that from a, from a university standpoint, the way we measure things like SAT scores, um, your grades, all those sorts of things, there are thousands of kids that I see daily that have really high test scores and really good grades. They're a dime a dozen in some ways, okay? So that may not be the best measure for you. It certainly was not the best measure for me. I, I figured it out later. Um, and so know that there are places that you can choose where you can be successful, um, even if they're not a top 10, top tier school, because they have the resources that you need to be able to be productive and make a difference and make a change as you graduate. So, you don't have to feel like a wasted space, you're original. So I mentioned you are special too. You know, every single one of us has different gifts to give, right? Every one of us has different strengths. And you've heard a lot of the speakers talk about using that for good, right? Especially in your own community. And kids coming out of high school, they have that too. Sometimes they just need the encouragement to believe that they can do it. So yes, they are special, but it doesn't always feel like it. And it doesn't feel like it when you get that letter that says, I'm not admitted to this school. And um, I can, you know, short story, my niece, one of my nieces who, who applied to a really, really competitive program, and she was counting on it, counting on getting in on that school. And she is vivacious, she is smart, she is personable, but there just weren't a lot of slots. So has any of you ever gotten the, it's you, not me? Oh, I'm sorry, it's me, not you? I just reversed it. The me, not you, you know, a lot of times in higher ed, it's not that you couldn't be successful, we just don't have enough spaces. So she was devastated by that. But she ended up going somewhere else, unbelievably successful, would never change it. So she was able to turn that switch and go, you know what, I'm just gonna. Taylor Swift is, twi twist? Taylor Swift is everywhere, so you know, I had to put her in. Um, or this is the most, you know. Let it go, let it go. You'll never see me cry. There should be no crying in college admissions. <laughs> or baseball. There can be disappointment. I get it, a little bit of anger. But as I said, you know, less choice can sometimes be better. And I'm not saying apply to one, okay? Don't do it as I did. Somewhere in the middle. I talked to a counselor recently, and there was a student applying to 39 universities. That's over 2K in application fees alone, right? That gets a little complicated. So what I'm saying is if someone, you know, if they say no, this is my favorite response. I'm just going to move on. I'm done. Now, for college choice, it typically, typically comes down to two F words. And neither one of them are four letters. I'm not going to go blue up here. Okay? 
fit and finances. Okay? Let's talk this first. So, we, I think student loan debt just hit a trillion dollars recently. Okay? And higher ed costs are, have been moving faster than health care. It, it's gotten a little cuckoo ca out there. The good news is, is there are some schools that are trying to make a difference and, and impact that, but you gotta look at the money. Um, when they also looked at that engagement piece, those that had a bunch of debt weren't as engaged, right? So I think some loans can be okay, but not a ton of loans, right? And if you, you've gotta have that conversation prior to getting all lovey-dovey about what schools you wanna go to as far as what can you actually afford when you go out and talk. So the other piece um, is, is fit. And, you know, it'd be awesome if you rocked up to a college and you went, ah, my people, this is it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've had students do that, seriously. And, and, you know, that's awesome if that happens, but then you gotta make sure you can afford that place, right? And you gotta balance that out. And so, yes, fit is important. So I always say if, the, if, if you have a clear number one for real reasons, because they have the programs that you want, you're gonna, something there that you're going to be able to do that you couldn't do at other places, then definitely you do it. You go there if you can afford it, and it's more than other things. But if there's a balance between the fit, go where it's going to cost less so that you can do other things down the road and not be burdened by that debt. And you know what you can do about the places that you go, which I did, which my niece Amy did? So I made it my home. I didn't go there going, this is my home. I made it my home. So that's where it's all about, where the students are the most important piece of all of this. And if they're in w willing to engage, then they can be and extremely successful. So the answer lies in the question of these lyrics. The answer lies in the question of these lyrics. Should I stay or should I go now? So, the, 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 so it's not should I go to college or not, it's go to college, stay in college, right? And graduate and you can be successful. And we need within this community and others to be helping students simplify this really complicated process, especially for first generations. As our demographics are changing as a country, we need more diversity in our universities, and we're the ones that can help make a change. So, and because they're gonna be our future leaders, they're gonna be the ones up here, hopefully inspiring, right? Sparking, and making that change. <laughs> With that, I just want to say oh, I want you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Where to your mother? Let's get out of here. Thank you guys very much.